Yeah, I actually, I, I'm, I'm so energized. Okay, so just the feeling right now, right? That I'm right now, <laughs> after reflecting and listening and being a silent witness. I mean, I, that's, I mean, just the silent witness part. And, and, and it's almost like you're just uh, exponentially fanning the flame of your own, like, beautiful humanity as other people's flames are getting fanned. I feel like that sounds very like <laughs> not grounded in science or something, but it like, feels really good. But I'm kind of grounded in science because I wrote about this. <laughs> so, so what's so cool is that it's, I can feel my cortisol just like dissolving and my oxytocin just blossoming and it's so real, like it's the, this, this neurological truth, like what Alara was just talking about, rewiring different chemicals are being released in my body just from this process of simply speaking and listening and watching other people do that. And, and the fact that that's all we need in order to, to change our, our biology, is like, that's really cool. Um, so that's what I've said. Can I uh, reflect? That yes, I'm done no, <laughs> for now. No. I, I want to hear more. It's just that there's these wonderful things and I don't <laughs> want to lose them. And yeah. So you had this expression at first about fanning the flames of each other's humanity. And you said something about how wonderful it's feeling right now and how um, when we talk about feeling wonderful, that can sound unscientific, but that you actually have science to back it up because you've been doing this research. And so the science has to do with and dissolving cortisol and releasing oxytocin and that it's just amazing to realize that we have everything we need to change our biology by just being together in this generous way with each other where there's room for each person to be heard and so that's that's the the scientific version of this feels wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And yes. More. Okay. And I feel heard. And I want to say like, maybe, I mean, I don't think empathy circles are going to like cure depression for the planet, but I think that like, like I'm not a doctor, so I can't, like, I'm not going to prescribe empathy circles, but I do think it feels wonderful. And I'm also conscious of like, I'm really up against with myself, this, this like need to ground it in science. I think because so much of my work has been in this area and I've gotten so many eye rolls in my life, I'm like, fine, I'll ground everything in science. But, you know, just like, it's why, like why it's enough. And I think just like the experiential learning of it, like proves it to be enough. And that's a big relief for me. I'm starting to realize like, all right, fine, let's ground it in science, but also let's just like not, and just experience the thing and trust that the experience is enough. And because it is, because that is, that's been true. I mean, so that's a kind of, I'm just like, feel like la layers are shedding around all that, like need to like make it hard. Yeah, so, so you're, as you know, as you, as you hear things back, you're going another level and kind of noticing and wondering about your own uh, pattern of wanting to ground things in science. So you're recognizing that over the course of your life and working on in this area, you've gotten a lot of eye rolls for people. And so that's like kind of fed your desire to ground things in science. And at the same, and, and it is important. And at the same time, you also um, are reflecting on the power of the experience and feeling how the experience has like its own truth, its own weight, its own enoughness. And so maybe when we introduce people to the experience of it, in some circumstances, we may not need to lead, lean so much on the science, even though it's also good to know that the science is there or something like that. So there's a lightness and feeling a little bit of that uh, needing to ground it in science just so people don't roll their eyes off. <laughs> I feel very heard. Thank you.